Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Smartphone Theater. It has been a long time and um, outside of our poetry shows, but uh, you're missed. And um, we're thrilled to be back uh, once again with Home Fire 7 by Joe Keys. I'm Todd Felderstein. I'm your host, founder of Smartphone Theater. It's something that we created back in March of 2020. 50 shows-ish plus, give or take, uh, later. And here we are. We're back. So um, shows keep on coming. And hopefully we'll have one more before the end of the year. If not, uh, make sure to check the website for our next show, which is early in uh, 2023. Oh, my gosh. So this is a special Thanksgiving show. This is Home Fire 7. It's by Joe Keyes. It's directed by Peter Flood, starring Lily Knight and Steve Hoffendahl. It's Rena and Bob. Um, we will have a little hello and a little talk back at the end. So please stick around. Don't go away. And uh, again, thank you guys for coming. Um, this is a donation-based service. So if you are moved, please go onto the website where you could donate any amount that you like. Um, that would be wonderful. We would all appreciate it very much. This is um, smartphonetheater.com. So anytime you like, it's always up and we would love your support. All right. So um, without further ado, this is the seventh installment of Home Fires of Home Fires, Home Fire 7 by Joe Keys. We'll see you guys shortly. Enjoy. <laughs> Dang, I'm sorry. Oh, God. Ugh. Oh, Freddy. Wait, Freddy. Oh, damn it. Stupid. So stupid. I, I just want... I didn't... Please. Help me. Help us. Oh. Oh. Howdy. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Ooh, you got a nice tie. It's our lucky day. It was the last rhubarb pie on the shelf at the Red Owl. Oh, I, is it, how was your day? Up and down. Up and down. You want me to make some soup? Uh, we've got uh, chicken noodle or tomato or split pea or bean too or beef noodle. Uh, I'll just have some cheese and some crackers. I can make you a sandwich. You want a sandwich? I don't think so. You sure? Maybe a little pickled herring is good. Mm -hmm. Getting chilly out there. What? Getting chilly. Oh, yeah. oh. What, what what you been doing? Oh, I was uh Looking at the, uh, there's another used book sale uh, in the basement of the Hintermeister building this Saturday at 2. Oh, yeah? It's nice they keep using that old building to, to do that. It's good to encourage reading these days, especially since they closed down the library. Right. I need some more books. Yeah, sometimes they have some good ones over there. You know, at the Hintermeister building, I mean. But... Uh, but there's always way too many westerns. <laughs> God, why do people like westerns? I mean, it's just so hot gunfights. That's all we need to read about is more west, more shooting. I hate it. 
Yeah, it looks like the Wild West is with us forever. I know. That's what I mean. Why don't you sit down? Why? I, can't I went believe to see old doctor. Oh, sorry. What? No, go ahead. No, I. You go. Doctor Velderhide called me today. Oh yeah. Uh, what did he say? It looks like my cancer is in remission. Oh, that's great, Paul. That second lump has shrunk down to almost nothing. Really? Oh yes. Oh, and the, your testicle, it, it, uh, is it, I mean, is it, it, it it's, it's completely back to normal. God. He was surprised, but he said he'd seen it before, the, the shrinkage. Well, that, that's just, it's, 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 how do you think it happened? Bob? I do not know. I knew it. What's that? Oh, I, nothing. I, I. What? Oh, well, I just, I. Yes? Uh, I've been praying for you and, um, and um, meditating. That can't hurt, I don't suppose. I believe I will have a pickle. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's so... Wonderful, Bob. It's a nice surprise. It sure is. You just never know. What's that? I said you never know. Right. You don't. Have you ever heard about May apples? What? It's a plant. Oh, yeah, May apples. It's also called mandrake. And which is umbrella. Yeah, I've heard of it. It's poisonous. Not the fruit, if it's dried and powdered. Good. I guess that's right. Uh, why are we talking about this? Well, you just said you never know about things, about how things will turn out. And uh, I... So why are we talking about mandrake? I've been thinking a lot about how we know things, what we know or think we know, like you said, and I agree. And uh, I've, I've, I've been learning a lot from Larry Crow. So you said? I should have told you before. Yeah. I was afraid you wouldn't go for it. Go for See, what? Larry's people have used it for centuries. Have you been taking mandrake? No, no. Well, then what? Why are we waiting? It's Sean Promise with cancer. Wait a minute. Don't be mad. What did you I put a little in your oatmeal. Just a little. What? Just a little. When? For about a month. Just a little. I can't. I don't. What the hell are you doing? What? What are you? Do you know how poisonous that plant is? Yes, I researched it. Well, you're not a doctor. Neither is Larry. He knows things. I know things. Well, Bob, you've got to understand. I am not your goddamn no, guinea pig. Calm down, Bob. Please. Oh, I can't believe no, this. Please just let Where, me. Explain. How much did you? Half a teaspoon. How often? Three times a week. For a month. God damn it. God damn it. Bob. You, you refuse to take a proven effective antidepressant because it makes you feel dead. Well, yes, it does. But I you have... got no problem feeding me a known toxic poisonous plant. In my oatmeal. It fights cancer. The Indians. Well, good for the Indians. There is no serious statistics of any proven medical value. Your cancer is gone. It's going. It may be it. Are you taking credit for that? You and uh, Dr. Larry? It's not possible, Bob. It's possible there's life on other planets, but you can't. You don't. I. Ah, boy, I, just, I don't believe you. Just because the FDA doesn't approve, well, does that mean... We, we are not having that discussion again. Don't ever give me anything again. 
ever again. All right. I won't. Jesus. Jesus. I did it because I believed it would help you. And I knew you wouldn't take it. You knew I wouldn't take yes. it. Yes. So you decided I should take it. Okay. I just, feel just... betrayed. Don't, Bob. You got more faith in Larry than you do in me. What? You heard me. I got a I got a 40-year medical practice. No, it's and, not about that. Well, what's it about then? What the hell is it about? You and Larry and the plants and saging and your new rituals. It's about evolving. I'm evolving. What, what does that even mean? I've lived my life a certain way, and I never really felt, I don't feel alive. Well, I'm sorry. No, there's a different way to be than what you're used to. I feel better since I started this path. It's a path, all right. It's a change. I need you to believe me, to believe in me. What changes do we need after all these years? I never questioned anything. What questions? What questions do you have, Rita? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't, It's the way I look at life. I don't feel like I chose it. It just happened. Eight kids and, and, and... Life happens to everybody. No matter what we choose, we got through everything, haven't we? I don't want to just get through things. Not anymore. I want to really live here. I did the best I could. It's not about you. Oh. I mean, I love you, Bob. And even when you don't say it, I know it. I'm sorry. I just, I don't, I, I didn't grow up with, so we didn't talk about feelings. I think we can be kind of stunted and not even know that pain affects you. I, I had to face a lot of it this morning. Truth about myself. Truth. We bury things, Bob, that we're afraid to look at. I talked to Freddie. What did he do? I heard do? him. What kind of hurt? I blamed him. For what? When he was molested by Kenny Linger. Oh, I, no. I Can didn't we, believe why him. Why do we have now, to? He has a right to not trust so me. I was the same age. Five. I was wet. I I'd, I'd, I'd wet myself. I was up wandering the halls, and I, I felt this for the first time. A, a consciousness. I've had it my whole life. Ever since then, I was at their door, mom and dad. I, I, I pushed it open, and they were right in front of me, in the moonlight, naked. Okay. I thought they were wrestling. Well, it, that... She yanked me into the bathroom. I was, I was in the tub, naked and 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 cold, cold water, and she scrubbed me hard. She was mad at me, and that's what I did to Freddie. I yanked him into a bath, a cold bath, and I scrubbed him hard like he was to blame, and he never forgot it either. Well, he's got to. And I was gotta. drinking. 
I was. It's the past. But it doesn't stay there. You just got to, you just, I mean, I mean, your mother, well, I mean, you know, she was, I mean, she didn't seem that happy. She was scared. And she scared me. God knows what happened to her when she was five. I wish I knew. We all have these things that are. She worried all the time. And so do I. For no reason. You got to move forward. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. You just don't worry about the past. I need to think about it. But if you can't change something that, that, that disturbs you, why even think about it? It's the suffering that stays with us, Bob. It's, it's, it's the suffering. You have to accept it. We all have it. These memories. All of us, these things, events, things. What? Bob, what? Some things are better off buried. You seem angry sometimes. Like you're mad at someone who's not here. I just want to come home for lunch and have a dish of pickles on the table and look out the window at a well-kept lawn. I know you do. It's how you get by. Life is hard enough today. Well, I talked to Freddie, so there's hope. Hope is the only thing that keeps us going. And love. Oh, yeah. You know, you can't forget about that. I mean. Oh, look. There she is again. Oh. Pretty little bird. She never seems to worry. Not that we can see. So lovely. Beautiful. I am so happy for you, Bob. Why? Your cancer. Oh, yeah. I forgot for a second I even have it. <laughs> it's going away. We'll see. Has it been busy today? Kind of slow mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. I did have to deal with a pretty bad situation. Oh, what, Bob? What happened? Other farm accident. Oh. Daryl Kubel. Daryl? What did he do? He was up on the roof of his barn trying to repair an old weather vane. He had an old cast iron rooster that broke off the top of it and I guess he was up there with a new one and he was trying to attach it to this metal rod that was sticking up and he must have slipped. The rod was sharp. It went right through his upper chest, behind his clavicle and out through his back. Oh, did he, did he? Uh, He's did, gone. Oh, God. He was hanging there, impaled. Oh, God. 38 years old. I know. The kids in a passing school bus saw him from the road turning in the wind. I can't believe it. Yeah. Such a nice guy. Why? They sent out a bucket truck to go up and get him. And that took four men. And when they finally got him uh, unskewered, I guess you'd say, the damn thing broke away. The bucket broke away? It broke off its arm and crashed to the ground. Jesus. Now you got poor dead Daryl and the two Klinsky brothers, each with a broken tailbone. No. Oh, and the other two men, were they, were they? Marwald Duffus and Dwayne Labork. Not a, not a scratch on either one of them. I'm, they're both pretty heavy guys, so their weight must have cushioned their fall and saved their tailbones. It's tragic. On this beautiful fall day. He was alone out there, Daryl. 
Who's going to take care of the farm? Some big corporate outfit will grab it. A family farm? Four generations, right? Yep. Sad. Everything changes. That's right, Bob. That's right. That's why I, I, I want to come home to a, a dish of pickles and, and you. You want some more coffee? A little bit. Bob? Of course, they didn't have any health insurance. The Kinsky brothers? Yeah. Did you? I took care of them. Oh, good God. I happen to have a couple of old donut cushions in my office, but I tell you, a broken tailbone is not a lot of fun. How do you treat them? Time. Just time. They'll be standing a lot. Oh, my God. It could always be worse. Sometimes you wonder how. Sometimes you do. Poor Carol. I used to see him at church. He wore that same burgundy suit coat every Sunday for years in that gold tie with a little round pin of some old Pope's face on it. He was a greeter. But he always seemed nervous. He didn't like to make eye contact. He has his only social life, so I he also enjoyed the tractor pulls at the county fair. Oh, that's right. No wife, no kids. I guess it's a blessing. His folks are gone. They didn't have to see him like that up here. Strange blessing. No. Oh. Look at this, Bob. Guess who got arrested yesterday? I'm reading Dory's crime blotter. Oh. I think you'll find this interesting. What? Sheila Olson. What? She exposed herself to Randy Dahlmeyer. You're kidding. She opened her shirt and took out her breast. It says so right here in the paper. Well, what do you know about that? Oh. Sheriff Travelsfold was coming around the corner by Tiki Small Engine Repair Shop, and the, the sheriff, sheriff saw her open, open her blouse and, and hold pull. up her great big boobs. Oh, good. They finally got her into trouble. If she's going around showing her boobs to 18-year-olds, who's going to believe her story about being in my office? I think she just killed her case. You should countersue her, Bob. I, I, I should sue her. For one dollar, just to prove my point. Yeah, and to show the whole town that you're not a, that you didn't. I didn't do anything improper when I examined her. Stupid boobs. It's karma, Bob. She's going to pay you. Do you believe in that sort of thing? Oh, I do. I do. I was getting kind of worried. Why? Well, just things people have been saying to me lately around town. What do you mean? I went to Whipple's gas station yesterday. I went in to pay. I turned to leave. I'm almost out the door, and the kid behind the counter, Byron Paplo, he says, Sheila Olson says hi. He didn't. He's always been a smart ass, that kid. I hate those Paplos. They're loud and rude and stupid, and, and they all smell like garbage. Well, I'm, they're pretty poor people. It's no excuse for being mean, is it? Might be. What did you say, Bob? Well, did you he, say anything? He caught me off guard. I, I thought for a second, and I said, um, "Well, you tell lying Sheila Olson, I'll see her in court." Good for you. Good for you. I haven't heard from her lawyer. Maybe they'll drop it. Yeah, she'll be too busy getting sued by Randy Dahlmeyer. <laughs> I hope so. That family's kind of shifty, too. The Dahlmeyers. Did he get arrested for stealing, Randy? More than once. It's getting so crazy around here. A lot of desperate people.
did uh, Freddie go to work out at Gerald Hertzman's? He came home and then he left after we talked, just before you got here. Well, he's got a job. That's a good thing. No, I, th I think he's trying to get things together. There's a lot to be said for the dignity of work and farming. Hmm? Oh. Hello? Hello, Sheriff. Really? That's, uh, that's unusual. I don't know. I, I can ask Freddie. No, not right now. Well, yes, of course. We'll do, Sheriff. Yeah, yeah, I know it, it is getting cold out at night. Okay then. Yeah. You betcha. Okay then. Bye. What happened, Bob? They can't find Gerald Herdsman. He's gone? Yeah. How could he go anywhere? He's a hundred years old and he's Deaf and blind. A hundred and one. And no legs. Right. No legs. So he won't get far. In that little red wagon, he pulls himself around him. Well, he's, he's still got good arms. Where do they think he... They don't know. That's strange. Yeah. There's, there she is again. She's even more purple today. <laughs> Radiant. She'll stay all winter, I think. Sometimes they do. She will. I hope so. Freddie. Yeah. Are you gonna, I mean, uh, yeah. Talk to him? Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'm applauding for the world. Great. Wonderful job, guys. Congratulations. Um, to our audience, you can type in, if you have any questions, you can type in on YouTube. Um, there's a comment section, and then I can read it out loud. We're on a different platform now. We have shifted to a new platform, so there's no more. I can't bring your voices in, but if you do have a question or a comment, feel free to type it in and and theoretically, I'll see it pop up on my screen. But congratulations, everybody! Um, wonderful job. And uh, uh, let me let me introduce everybody before we actually get into like a tiny conversation and then get into our Sunday nights. So Lily Knight is Rena. So just wave. And Steve Hoffendahl is Bob. Joe Keys our playwright, and Peter Flood our director. <laughs> and there's Claire. And Claire. Yay! 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 So, Michael, thanks for the comments. So wonderful, great work, everybody. I totally agree. I absolutely agree. Um, you know, we are we are all we all happen to be in Southern California today, but we're in different parts of of town. So, um, Lily and Steve are are over there, and Joe is over here, and Peter's uh, right back there. So, and I'm and I'm right here. Um, but we're all within like roughly forty five minutes of each other. And you know what? This platform still reigns. It's still great. So even though people aren't stuck in their homes, it's really a wonderful thing. And uh, we have, we continue to, 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 you know, we're thrilled just to bring theater to people's homes, to live theater. Everything is live that you're seeing today. So thoughts, comments, anything, guys, before we uh, have a maybe a question or two, and then we're going to say goodnight and, and uh, move on. Joe, Peter, Steve, Lily. I'll I'll throw <laughs> I'll throw I'll throw a question. Joe, Home Fire Seven. 
I know we've already been talking about home fires eight and nine and and ten. And um, are, are these uh, are these keeping you up at night or what's going on? Oh, Joe, you know what? I have you muted. I hate I hate when that happens. Um, just because we were getting a little feedback. So, Joe, try that. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yeah, I just got to have to start out by thanking you, Todd, for creating the world of oh, smartphone yeah. theater. God you betcha. Bless you. <laughs> and for Peter, Peter Flood's steady guiding hand and uh, this uh, and in, great insight. And, of course, Steve and Lily for being two great actors, just interpreting this material. I really, we, it's just, I, I'm grateful to be in such a uh, talented company. I really, I say that every time because it's true. And I want to give my respects to our team because uh, it's a great partnership. But yeah, I mean, lately, because I don't know where the hell uh, eight is going, I've been staying, I've been trying, I kind of believe sometimes if you're almost asleep, that you're in that place between, you know, sleep and consciousness, that things will come to you that you need. So I'm hoping and praying to an unseen, unknown God that uh, the answers will come. <laughs> the next <laughs> the next episode, the next uh, plot. I just say that uh, there's no value on insight without Stephen Lilly. Uh, the insight could put, float around in the universe without a home and you know until it's received and brought to life uh, you know it's just an idea so anyway I'm deeply grateful for the two of them and that they're in the same frame and the house that they, you know it's a profound yeah. that we've said before in other episodes and I will say that Joe hasn't slept for at least three weeks that I'm aware of maybe six thinking about <laughs> Yeah, uh, great to see you, um, Joe. You have, uh, you, you uh, I know you have a lot of things. Sorry, I'm sorry to make this the Joe hour. Um, you have, I know you have a lot of things going on in in your brain. How do you, how do you sort of um, multitask your story ideas? Do you have a, do you have a, a, a procedure or, or what do you do? I have a little notebook here, and it says home fires on it. And I, I write down stuff, <clears throat> and then uh, <clears throat> I, I, you know, I've just been trying to think of events that I can connect together that make sense for our next story, you know, and and keeping the the plate spinning about things like Freddie and Bob's cancer and Rena's pursuit of uh, enlightenment, uh, you know, how to how to keep those things connect uh, alive and connected and move forward without being uh, repetitious. It gets right. it's more and more challenging each time because we don't want to repeat ourselves in a way that it's been done before. But right. well, everybody, well, everybody. Well, Joe, Michael wants to know if if we're ever going to see Freddie again. Good question. Uh, yeah, that is a good question. <clears throat> maybe just part of him. If he's eaten by the hogs, maybe they find a foot or something. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just sorry. I don't know where that came from. <clears throat> um, maybe. <laughs> Maybe once this is all opened up, we'll see everybody, you know. Uh -huh. the, uh, Freddie will make a brief entrance before season two. Possibly. Yeah. And, okay. uh, and also just want to say, uh, I see that first Bernhardt is on the, the link today, uh, which uh, is a close friend of mine from my army years. We survived uh, mm -hmm. army years from 68 to 71 uh, through theater, I have to say. Theater yeah. and uh, uh, other, other extracurricular activities. At the time, anyway, he was a creative, funny guy. I'm glad he was uh, able to see us. That's great. And we also have Peter Minton um, just said congratulations. Hey, Peter. Congratulations on another well done episode. Stephen Lilly look as comfortable as if they were in their own home. <laughs> How do we do that? Now that's acting. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Fantastic, Peter. What it you know as you as you have directed all all seven episodes now, um, is there uh, what is it sort of the evolution of your your own personal storytelling from one to seven? You know, it, uh, for me, um, I I have a deep sort of uh, drawn to Joe because uh, the story actually mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't get the story until you enter into the characters. Really, it is completely rooted in uh, the characters and their. Uh, I won't even. I'm avoiding the word conflicts. Their realities, uh, both where they live 
who they are to one another, their situations, all the circumstances. So it's like a uh, an, an unfolding puzzle. And a little bit, I, I we were just talking in the car uh, before we came on. It's it's I've made an analogy to home fire. It's like doing a crossword puzzle in a way. So you're really following the content as it evolves one after another. And it doesn't just give itself away overnight. So it's, it's mesmerizing in that way. And it's a credit to Joe's writing and right. uh, and, the, and to the uh, profound gratitude and satisfaction for working with Steve and Lily and uh, with you, Todd, and the creative process. Because uh, Home Fires is in an arc. It's, a, it's in a narrative arc over a number of episodes. So we don't know what the story is right now. We're just following these two characters in, in uh, good faith that they will lead us to the completion of the story. All right. Well um, said. Let me, uh, um, Stephen, Stephen Lilly. So, um, do you take these characters to? I was going to say, do you take them home with you? But, uh, but you, how much, how much conversation do you have about these characters when, when, um, when, when, when we're not all together? <laughs> well, a lot lately. Well, we, we we miss, you know, there's a big gaps between some of the episodes, and we miss going here, <laughs> you mm. know, with each other. Oh, that's nice. um, so that's, that's one thing. But we also um, remark, Steve has remarked about, um, you know, the fact that there's, there's ways that we're quite different. And in some ways, he's more like Rena, and I'm more like Bob. In certain aspects of our personalities, so, I love that. Yeah. Wow, that that's fantastic. So how do you how do you find yourself more like Bob? <laughs> um. Well, <laughs> I don't. I, I'm not, sure, I, I, I'm not sure I can say without revealing something. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, there's a there's a stoicism that um, I think is is not like Steve. That is a little bit more like me. And there's a um, kind of exuberance and and an expressiveness that's more like Steve, I think, mm. than than really. Mine. Yeah. Wow, not that I'm not exuberant in my own yeah, ways, she's, but she's but, but like not too, not so much like Rena. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So, all right, uh, Bruce Robinson says, uh, "What a wonderful piece of theater! It just keeps getting getting better. These are two spectacular actors, terrific. I care about these two very much." Yeah, thank you, Bruce. A wonderful Thanks. playwright, uh, Bruce Robinson. Wonderful playwright. So, thank you, thank you for chiming in. Yeah, I, mean, I I share your affection, Bruce. I, I do. I think the, these two characters come; they they're available to us. I mean, they're so immediately available to us, uh, and uh, that's true in Joe's other writing. And uh, the humanity really comes off the page. Great. All right. I am. Um, if anybody else has any thoughts, you know, please chat them in. Otherwise, um, you know, we're going to go at a forty-five minutes today. Uh, which which is great, and um, again um, we have uh, we're on a new platform, so I have all these wonderful little buttons that I can press. So we have if um, if you're able to you know please donate to smartphone theater. It's what keeps our lights on, so that would be fantastic. Um, Home Fires Eight will be here um, in the new year. So um, this was our, our special Thanksgiving, our special Thanksgiving. So, um, so definitely we will be here in the new year. Um, Joe, I'm going to lower your mic again because we're getting a little feedback kicking in. Um, so we're going to get out the air. Um, and, uh, and we're going to have a bunch of other plays as well. So, uh, and we also will have live poetry. We've already done... We, our last two shows were poetry shows, which were really, really well received. So we will have more poetry um, in the new year. We'll have new plays, original plays in the new year, always live. And always, now we're moving to this platform. So you'll be able to just jump on YouTube and see everything live. Um, our intention is to do as much live as possible. All right. Can, you, can I say something? Please. Oh, yeah, I'm on. And, um, if, if the people, if, they're, if this is the first time, what, time they've watched it i was just going to remind them you can find the other six episodes on youtube correct or smartphone theater 
Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Yes, it's absolutely true. We all, After we do a live show, they are all put on smartphonetheater.com, so you'll be able to then go and watch them and rewatch them and rewatch them. And now that we have seven episodes of Home Fires, it's a series. It's a legitimate series. And uh, and obviously, we want to we want to see this grow and eventually take it to a streaming service. So if any streaming service people are out there, um, you know, please give me a call. Shoot me an email, Todd at smartphonetheater.com. Shoot me a note because we have some great ideas. And obviously you see that it, that it works and it works really, really well. Okay, that's that's my pitch for, for home fires. Um, all right, in the meantime, I wish everybody a very, very happy Thanksgiving. Yes. And yes, have a great Thanksgiving. And if we don't see you uh, during in December, have a wonderful holiday season. Although I have a feeling we're going to see you in the, in December, so don't go too far. Keep on checking, and we'll of course send send out invitations and notices and all sorts of stuff. All right, guys. Anything else? Anything else you want to share? That's it. Thank you, guys. Hey, everybody, have a great Thank Sunday you. night. Thank you again for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you all very soon. Okay. Thanks. Nice. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>